Hi friends, welcome to Orario. In the previous class, we discussed about the parts of neuron and their functions. In this class, we will discuss more about Schwann cells. A single neuron can't control and coordinate the whole activities. So, a group of neuron or a bundle of neuron, we can call it as a nerve. I repeat, a bundle of neuron is known as a nerve. Now, it is the bundle of neuron and the nerves are also encircled by the myelin sheath and the myelin sheath in the nerves are formed of the specialized cells called Schwann cells. I repeat, the myelin sheath in the nerves are formed of Schwann cells while the myelin sheath in the brain and the spinal cord are formed of a specialized cells called oligodendrocytes. Oligodendrocytes. So I conclude that the myelin sheath in the nerve is formed of Schwann cells, while the myelin sheath in brain and the spinal cord are formed of a specialized cells. They are called oligodendrocytes. All neurons are not covered by or encircled by myelin sheath. And they are termed as non-myelinated neuron. And those neurons which are encircled by myelin sheath and they are called myelinated neurons. Myelinated neurons which are the neurons that encircled by myelin sheath. And there is a group of another neurons which are not encircled by myelin sheath. And they are called non-myelinated neuron. You might have noticed that myelin sheath has a shiny white color. Yes, myelin sheath has a shiny white color. So, the part of brain and spinal cord where more myelinated neurons are present, they are called white matter. Okay, so more myelinated neurons are present, they are called white matter or that part is called white matter. The part where non-myelinated neuron are present, they are called gray matter. Gray matter. So, here white matter is rich in myelinated neuron in gray matter, the myelinated neurons are absent. So, there is a chance for a question. You can differentiate between white matter and gray matter. Okay, now we are going to discuss the functions of myelin sheath. The myelin sheath is the encircling or repeated encircling around the axon. So, we have to study the four important functions of myelin sheath. Okay, we discussed that myelin sheath is the repeated encircling around the axon. It acts as a membrane. So, the main function of the myelin sheath is to protect the axon from the external injuries. Number one, to protect the axon from external injuries. Because it acts as a membrane. two the axons also are cells so the cells need oxygen and nutrients the myelin sheath provide enough oxygen and nutrients to the axon so number two is to provide to provide oxygen and nutrients to axon. Number 3, myelin sheath act as an electrical insulators. They will protect or they will encircle the axon in order to act as an electrical insulators. Act as an, sorry, act as an 
electrical insulator. Number four, myelin sheath can accelerate the speed of the impulses. Okay, number four, the myelin sheath can accelerate, accelerate the speed of impulses. So, these are the main functions of myelin sheath. They protect the axon from external shocks or external injuries and they can provide enough oxygen and nutrients to the axon and they can act as the electrical insulator. Also, they accelerate the speed of impulses. We studied that nervous system will control and manage all these activities. Then, how these impulses are generated and transmitted? Okay. Now we are going to study the generation and transmission of impulses. Generation and transmission of impulses. For this, we can consider the representation of an axon. So, you may please draw this representation. This is a part of axon. An axon is a part of neuron. It also has a different cell membrane. Outside the cell membrane, axon has positive charge. You may please mark this. And inside it has negatively charged. It is not in the case of axon only but in the case of the whole cell. Outside the membrane it has positive charge and inside the membrane it has negatively charged. So they maintain a equilibrium. This is due to the distribution of specific ions. So this electrical equilibrium will disturb due to the specific stimulus. So you may please mark here as a stimulus. Because stimulus is responsible for impulses. Whenever a stimulus will stick here, the electronical configuration of the ions will change. It may change like this. It may change like this. The positive charge on the outer side will become negatively charged and the inner side become positively charged. This change is due to the action of stimulus on axon. So, there is a change in the electronic configuration of certain ions. The positive charge in the outer side will become negatively charged and the negative charge will become positive charge. This momentary charge change can stimulate the next part and it will move as continuous. Here positive, negative, negative, negative. Here is the stimulus action. Negative, positive, positive. And it will change the charge in reverse order. So we can called impulse as the movement of reverse charge. So, the movement of reverse charge through axon will create the impulse and it is the electrical impulse. So, I conclude that the generation and transmission of impulses is due to the reverse of charge across the plasma membrane. Okay, and this is a momentarily charge change and the reverse charge movement is known as impulse. I hope that you understood generation and transmission of impulses very well. So in the whole class we discussed what is Schwann cells, myelin sheath and their functions and this process. So if you have any doubt you may please leave in the comment box. In the coming classes we will discuss the transmission of impulse from synaptic knob to next neuron. Thank you.